today we're going to be talking about frictional forces. Now we talked about frictional forces slightly in one of our previous videos called types of forces, but we didn't really go into that much detail. We didn't really go over any of the equations that are necessary to solve frictional force problems. And so far we've been neglecting friction in our problems. So today we're going to go on a deep dive into frictional forces because they're ultimately unavoidable in our lives. So we can no longer neglect friction because they're always present in our life. If we were not able to counteract them, they would stop most moving objects and bring to a halt almost everything. So we have to know how to deal with them in our problems. So there are two types of friction. We're going to start with something called the static frictional force. So let's say that we have a block that rests on a tabletop, okay? There is the gravitational force Fg on it, and this is balanced by a normal force Fn. And let's say you exert a force F on the block, and you are attempting to pull it to the left. However, there is a response force to your pulling force, which is a frictional force, a small frictional force, lowercase f, s, that is directed to the right, that exactly balances out your force. And this small f, s over here, this is the static frictional force. And so the block does not move because the total net force on the block is zero, so it cannot accelerate. However, as you increase the magnitude of your applied force, the magnitude of the static frictional force also increases and the block will remain at rest. However, when the applied force reaches a certain magnitude, the block sort of breaks away from its intimate contact with the tabletop and then it will start accelerating leftward in the direction that you pull it towards. So um, let's just say that we have a graph here Um, and this will be the time on the x-axis, and this will be the magnitude of the frictional force. So at time zero, you're not pulling, but then as time goes on, you increase your pulling force. And basically what I just said about the frictional force increasing to counteract your pulling force will basically look like this on a graph, something like this. So as your um, pulling force increases, you can also think of this x-axis as your pulling force F over here. So as your pulling force increases, the frictional force will also increase to counteract that. However, at a certain maximum point here, this is the maximum value of Fs. That is the point at which the block will start moving. And at that point, the friction will drop. The friction will drop at that point. And the new frictional force that opposes the motion is the kinetic frictional force. And the static frictional force, it's just like the name sounds. It's basically the frictional force that acts on an object that is not moving. Now the kinetic frictional force is the frictional force that is acting on a moving object. And usually, um, Based on the graph here, the kinetic frictional force over here is um, less than the maximum magnitude of the static frictional force. So this means if you want to move the block across the surface with a constant speed, you must usually decrease the magnitude of your applied force once the block begins to move. Okay, so let's just say that we have a dry and unlubricated body that is pressed against a surface in the same condition as in this block so we have another body here and then a force f attempts to slide the body along the surface so we have another force let's call this f2 okay and the resulting frictional force will have three properties so property one if the body does not move, then the static frictional force, Fs, 
and the component um, F that is parallel to the surface and balance each other out. So that means they are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And we can basically um, illustrate this like that. So they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And the second property is that the magnitude of this static frictional force has a maximum value fx max that is given by this mu s times fn, where fn is a normal force. I'm just going to head and draw that out for you. That's the normal force. So this is the maximum value of the static frictional force, and mu s here is the coefficient of static friction. And if the magnitude of the component of F2 exceeds um, Fx max, then the body will begin to slide along the surface in the direction of F2. And if the body begins to slide along the surface, that leads us to our third property. The magnitude of the frictional force will decrease to the kinetic friction value, which is given by a similar equation mu k times fn, or in this case, mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction. And during the sliding, this frictional force will oppose the motion. And the normal force is basically just a measure of how, of how firmly the body or block presses against the surface. For example, if the body presses harder, then by Newton's second and third law, Fn would be um, greater, it would increase. So in that case, um, the frictional force would also increase because the body is pressing harder against the surface and um, theoretically, which also makes sense, the body would be hard to like push or pull. And as just a little side note, these two values over here, the coefficients of static and kinetic friction, are dimensionless and must be determined experimentally. Um, there are like some generally established coefficients of friction for common surfaces like concrete or glass. Like glass would obviously have a lower coefficient of friction than something like, I don't know, concrete or wood. So yeah, these are usually determined experimentally. So now that we have a general understanding of friction, Let's go over a practice problem. So and this problem is going to go over the applications of frictional forces, but with a little bit more complication. So we're going to deal with a tilted applied force. So imagine that we have a block. Again, we're going to be working with a lot of blocks on surfaces. And then there is an applied force F that is directed um, at a downward angle of 30 degrees. So this is the horizontal. So this angle theta is equal to 30 degrees. And the magnitude of F is 12 newtons. And then the mass of this block is 8 kilograms. And we're given that um, mu S is 0.7. And mu k is um, 0 0.4. So the question is, if the block begins to slide, or does it remain stationary? And then it asks, what is the magnitude of the frictional force on the block? So to see if the block slides, we have to compare the magnitude of the applied force um, with the x component, with the maximum magnitude of the static frictional force, to see if it can overcome that force. So from trigonometry, we know that the x component of f is just equal to f times cosine theta. And plugging in the values of 12 and 30 degrees, we get that fx is equal to about 10.39 newtons. And we need to evaluate fx max, and we know that fs max is equal to mu s times fn. But now we have to find fn. And we can now use Newton's second law in the y direction, 
And we know that um, the net force in the y direction is simply equal to Fn minus mg, which is the force of gravity on the block. And we also have this downward pointing F sine theta component from the applied force. And this equals to m times the acceleration, which is just zero. And then we get that Fn equals to um, mg plus F sine theta. Okay, so now we can plug this back in to our original frictional equation. And we get that Fs max equals mu s times um, mg plus f sine theta. And then plugging things in, we get um, 0 0.7 times 8 times g, which is just 9.8 meters per second squared, plus 12 times sine of 30 degrees. And that gives us um, about 59 newtons. So from this, we can see that Fx is less than Fs max. And this means that it will remain stationary. Now, in order for the block to start sliding, the um, magnitude of the applied force in the x direction has to be equal to that of the static frictional force. Now, the static frictional force is greater than Fx, but that isn't possible because that means it would be accelerating in the opposite direction, but it's not. The block is stationary. So that means the magnitude of Fs actually lowers itself. It isn't at its maximum value yet, so it lo lowers itself to match the magnitude of Fx. So in this case, Fs is also equal to 10.39 newtons. Okay, so that was a problem where we applied frictional forces. I hope that gave you a clearer understanding of how we can apply friction to the motion problems that we solve, which will be more prominent in future problems and in the practice problems on my website. So please go check out my website if you haven't yet. And also we have launched our course on Udemy, so please go check that out as well. Both of them will be linked in the description down below. Thank you for watching today's video and I hope you guys have learned something new.